Here we go. All right, guys. Bonafide Hustler here. Raking profit in the house. Resale Rabbit here. College Picker is present and accounted for. Hey, what's going on, guys? The Bonafide Hustler, and you are tuning in to the Green Room Hangout number 15, Streamlining Your Business. I reside in Austin, Texas, and I buy stuff I find at pawn shops, state sales, yard sales, flea market swap meets, garage sales, and I put it on places like my antique booth, eBay, Amazon, and Craigslist, and consignment stores in town. That's what I do, and I run a channel called The Bonafide Hustler, but I'm one of the admins here on the Green Room. I'll toss it over to Reagan Profit. Thank you, sir. I am another admin of the green room. I reside in Connecticut. Yes, very, very cold Connecticut. And primarily selling on Amazon FBA right now, buying a lot from garage sales, pawn shops, thrift stores, doing some arbitrage uh, stuff on eBay and Amazon and stuff like that. But been reselling for about three years and constantly learning, growing, and um, really excited to give back and uh, share some awesome stuff about streamlining your business in tonight's show. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it off to my number one rabbit, John Dugan. Number two rabbit. Uh, I am the resale rabbit, and right now I'm coming at you from the Gulf Coast in Mobile, Alabama, and it is nice and warm here. Mm. I make a living buying, selling pretty much anything and everything, uh, specifically on Amazon FBA, and I travel around the country doing it. All right, CP, who are you? I am College Picker. I reside in a low-income efficiency apartment right now. I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico, working as a pharmacist and hustling on the side. Okay. And um, congratulations to College Picker because your YouTube channel had a absence of new video making, right? But it was recently broken, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was... To celebrate the uh, eight months without a video, I made a video. All right. So you guys got to tune into the College Picker's YouTube channel. You just type in The College Picker and look at his latest video, which is the Raiders jacket, which sold on Etsy. It's a really good video. Very well edited. He's back. And uh, give him a good comment and hit the like button for him. Um, we're going to be talking about streamlining your business um, here on this show. And before we get started, we want to make sure that we sound good. So um, I'll talk a little bit. Ray can talk a little bit. Resale Rabbit. Just, just make sure that we sound good. We're going to do a sound check. It's the right thing to do. We don't want to go through the entire show being all effed up. So um, go ahead, Ray can talk. I mean, I think I sound okay, but let's see what the Mike people check, say. Mike check, Mike check, one, two, one, two. What's the topic? What are we going to do? <laughs> all right. Resale Rabbit, talk a little bit. Let's make sure people can hear us. I'm not cool enough for a, a short rap for this. Okay. That, 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 that didn't rhyme, game, man. that was good enough. Rabbit, there's always time to step up your game, man. It doesn't matter where you're from, your past, your goals, man. You can step up your game today on this show right now. Just just spit a rap, man. I know you got it in you. Oh, no. You're putting him on the spot. Oh, no. No, thank you. <laughs> I, I won't put you guys Maybe one that. day. Maybe one day. We saw Rabbit needs to streamline his intro. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> College picker. College picker. Uh, go ahead and talk a little bit. Let's make sure people can hear you. One, two, one, two, low income efficiency internet. You probably can't hear me well because everyone's downloading stuff right now. <laughs> okay. I think you sound pretty good. I'm hoping that the fans the fans why do I say that? The subscribers. Um, the yeah, raving fans. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like saying fans because that's uh, we're not. You know, I like to always say we're not any better than anybody else. We just think differently, and we got a green room. That's I think it all has to come back to you, Chris, because you call them fans. You call us the staff. Well, you guys are definitely the staff. They're not the fans, but you guys are the staff. Just so you guys know. Um, Fair and by the way, some people might be watching right now and going, "Okay, Rusev Rab has been on." A lot of the recent green room hangout shows. Like, what's the deal here? Um, he is an honorary admin as of right now. He's just coming in as much as he can. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're we're try we're uh, letting him come on the hangouts. He's a very knowledge knowledgeable person. I hustled with him two weeks ago. That'll be an edited video pretty soon on my channel. Um, and uh, yeah, he's a really good hustler. Trust me. We wouldn't just put some random person here on the hangout or on the panel. So he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's got something really uh, interesting to talk to you guys about with regarding streamlining and FBA. So it's a really key position for him to be here right now. Um, I, there was a really good comment earlier in the feed, guys. I want to read it to you guys. And it was the very first comment in the entire hangout. So I'm going to read it to you. It's come from comes from ComfortZoneStudio.com. Thanks with my deepest respect to the green room admin staff. For all your valuable time, usable information, and positive mentorship. 
I'm ready to learn more so I can earn more. Peace. It's pretty good, right? Okay, maybe I'm the only person I think that's that's good, but uh, I thought it was a pretty good little uh, comment. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Uh, yes? I'm I'm not I'm nodding up and down. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Nodding good. Well, usually when I say does that does that sound good, that means like vocally say yes, it, it kind of sounds pr pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, okay. So college picker is inside. Well, wonders. Hmm, interesting. I don't know what that says. Uh, okay, so we have some people here in the feed. We have Cody Orgel from, uh, I'm not mistaken, is it Australia? Right, Raken? Cody? Yes, Cody is yeah, he's in, uh, live and direct from Australia. Okay, so we got a guy from Australia tuning into this green room hangout. Now that's going to show you the importance of this streamlining thing. we got Texas God Treasures in the house, Patrick Henry, Nestor Diaz. We have Mr. Saddy123. We have Al L. Oh, I've never seen Al L before. Um, Comfort Zone Studio, em Emerald City Resale, Franco Gutierrez, Chaz Azim, Henry S., who just got my book, by the way. Um, Julie Johnson, Hot Halloween Props, Aaron Kipper, um, other people, other people. Okay, so a lot of green rumors are in here. So, by the way, you know, without us just like preaching about the green room and like how we how great we think it is, if you have a question for the green room and you're in the actual comment feed right now, you're watching the show live, then just post it in the comment section. And plenty of green rumors are in the comment section, so they can do our job for us. They can tell you if it's good or not. I'm not going to tell. You. Obviously, if you hear it from me, I think it's a great place to be. But once you take it from the members, they're in the comment feed right now. You can ask them any question you want. They'll be glad to help you out. That's how it is in the green room. We don't think anyone's ever better than anybody else. So in the comment feed, people are out there to help you out. Um, Reagan, was that is that a pretty fair statement to say that that the peop the members that we see in the room that are enga highly engaging, they find themselves on these hangouts, right? And oh, absolutely, they're always like. Um, helping people out, even in the Hangouts, so it's really cool. So props to all you peeps out there that are helping us out. And one thing I want to mention, too, is, and I don't know if you've realized this over the last year or so, like the knowledge base on um, just like like a, like a an average level is like going through the roof. Like I go into the green room, and I'm like, holy crap, like half these people are like at a whole other level. Like it's it's crazy. Do you notice the, the amount of knowledge that's in there from others? And I, I'm not even talking about the admin staff. No, I mean, it's insane. We have some really, really, really <laughs> good people in the green room that have, like, zero YouTube presence. No one knows who they are. They're just there, and they join the room, and they're freaking animals when it comes to whatever it is, eBay or FBA. It's crazy. So um, absolutely what Raken said. It's totally true. I mean, there, I don't think there's any other way you could have hooked up with these people, so it's kind of cool like that. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, Nestor Diaz, this is a great question. Do you guys do retail arbitrage? <laughs> yes. It's kind, of a, <laughs> it's kind of a funny question. Uh, Dugan, do you do retail, retail arbitrage at all? Uh, fourth quarter, I do. Okay. Fourth quarter is one of the safest ways out there, by the way, Nestor, that you can do retail arbitrage. And Steve Rakin's about to be in his first fourth quarter FBA. I've done it. I've done. I've done some arbitrage. Me and uh, the rabbit did some a couple months ago as well. Okay, so you did some like outside yeah. quarter. Okay. Um, and I think it's safe to say that College Picker and myself know what fourth quarter is kind of like when it comes to big box stores and arbitrage itself. So, um, Okay, so there was a question that was directed towards me. There was something behind me that someone saw. This is crazy. These HD cameras, by the way. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing a Logitech. I don't know what this thing is. A C, 920. Maybe a 920. Okay, so Dugan, you just bought a camera today? Uh, I actually picked it up in Houston at a Goodwill store and just decided to keep it rather than send it out in the next last shipment. Okay, so yours is HD and all that stuff, obviously, right? Yes. Okay, and then College Picker is running the same one that I'm running. Raken's running the same one that I'm running. As a green room, as green room admins, we decided to get the same camera, so our production value is way better. But someone saw in my way, I cannot believe it, because someone saw this, College Picker, someone saw this in my background, and they're like... They go, is that retro three pack for you, or are you selling it? Someone just grabbed <laughs> just my background, and it's nuts. Can you tell that's a retro three pack CP just by looking? Yeah, at it? Yeah, I can. I but when I read that, I was thinking, hmm, do I have my stuff in the background? <laughs> I, I had to look at my own to see if I had. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that is a retro three pack. I did buy it from GameStop, and. Um, it's kind of, I'm playing that like I'm going to hold it for a little bit, then I'm going to send it in. I probably should have sent it in today when I did a shipment, but oh well, I didn't. Okay, so let's get into uh, this streamlining thing. I think it's important. So Wait, don't we have an announcement? Aren't we going give, to give away something for oh, free? Yes. The show oh, Steve, well? take it away. Go ahead. Take it away, Steve. Yeah, so I was talking to Chris before the show, and I said, man, you remember like when we used to give away stuff for free all the time? Like, we should start doing that again. And Chris is like, yeah, and everyone's like, yeah, we got to start doing it. So we're trying to figure out what to give away. 
And uh, we decided at the end of the show we're going to run like a little contest. We're going to probably ask a question. So you're going to have to be here at the end of the show. Uh, and you guys know our questions are always interesting. Thank God Yong's not here because he always um, overcomplicates the questions. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give away um, our book that we created as the Green Room, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. So for anyone in here who's brand spanking new or even if you're maybe an intermediate or an advanced uh, the book retails for like 40 bucks, so we're going to give it away for free to someone who's live on the show. We want to reward you for being here and you know, taking your time out of your day to do this. So stay tuned for the end of the show, and uh, we're going to run a fun contest. Yeah, and for the people that are already members in the green room, that, that guide is in the file section right now for free. It's just a perk that you guys get for being in the room. Okay, and gals. Okay, so let me, uh, let's start with the uh, streamlining thing because I think on your Periscope, Steve, and I know on my Periscope... I want to say, yeah, it was definitely on my Periscope, and it was definitely yep. on yours. Okay, so we got the question, um, what is streamlining, <clears throat> right? Now, we're not talking about steamlining, right? We're not talking about Titanic or Queen Elizabeth or any Queen Mary. We're not talking about steamliners. We're talking about streamlining, which is a business term. So, Raken, since you're, like, super eloquent with definitions, what do you think, what does streamlining mean to you? What, is, what does it mean, period? Let's just, just def define it real quick. My opinion is pretty short and, and, and sweet. It's putting systems in place to make your business more efficient. Okay. College make picker, you want to elaborate efficient. on that? That's a little too short for me. Well, that's what I posted <laughs> in the comments. Streamline. The verb, make an organization or system more efficient and effective by employing faster or simpler working methods. Okay. Good. So that's a that's the true definition. <laughs> that's now what he was looking for. Yeah, now we can't even define any more than that because that's the real definition right there. No, I, po I posted that like five minutes ago. Okay, but hey, I know. Um, so, uh, Resale Rabbit, you think you can echo in on that? Like when I say streamlining or if you ever hear about it or streamlining your processes, what, what comes to mind when, when you hear that? Uh, I would say my main system that I have in place is using the inventory lab, but there are many other ways that you can streamline your business. Okay, cool. All right. So the good thing about this show is it's going to allow us to take a peek back into our uh, hustler inception points, like when we first became hustlers and all, you know, when we were making mistakes left and right. So you're going to get to see kind of like that view in this show from all of us. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to show you kind of like our trajectory path and how we streamlined our own businesses to get where we are now. Um, and I had a question, I guess, for everyone. This is an open discussion, and this goes out to people in the feed, too. So if you want to echo in on this as an answer, I'll probably read out a couple of responses. Um, so I want to say this. So I want to ask this. Does streamlining, can anybody streamline, or is streamlining, like, something that a certain person does, like a person that always wants to move up in management or a person that always wants to do better with their life or better, like, is that the kind of person that streamlines? Or is streamlining something that can be encompassed or worked on by anybody out there? That was just one of my, my you know, because I, I look in some some of the other YouTube videos when I have some chances to watch some videos here and there, and sometimes I can just look and I'm like, man, it doesn't look like that person has their systems down, right? But then I can look at other people's videos and I'm like, man, that person's got a system. They, got a, they have a process. And I'm wondering, well, what's the difference between that person and the other person? Like, is it just that one person throughout life is always pushing forward and trying to make things better? So what do you guys think about that? Risa Rabbit, you, have, you had your finger right here on your... You are doing, like, the thinking thing. So what what is that... <laughs> And Raken now is do, do, doing the fake, the beard thing. Um, what is that? What is that? How would you echo upon that resale? Um, to be honest, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to get this set up. To um, I am going to be uh, screen sharing Inventory Lab. I figured out how to do that. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll pass that, it off. We'll pass yeah, it off. Let's go to Raken. That's fine. Raken knows what the question was. Right, right. Um, actually, I wasn't paying attention either. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I believe anybody has the ability to streamline. It's it's a learnable skill, um, just like anything in life. But there's certain people that I realized who they just they get very comfortable and they just like to do the bare minimum and just get by and do their thing. And then there's others who just drive forward. So I mean, it's a learnable skill, but you got to have that that fire and passion to want to improve and grow and kind of go outside your comfort zone. It's it's very easy to just do you know the basic stuff to just get by, but it takes a special person, someone who has that drive to want to learn the processes that you need to put in line to to streamline your business. So, anyone could do it, bottom line. Okay. Uh college picker, um 
you want to echo a little bit on that too. So I guess the original question was, does, is streamlining something that can be learned or does it reside in certain people? It just happens to be something that people that push forward can master very quickly. What do you think about that? I, I think you don't even think about it until you hit a certain point where you're like, wow, I need to figure something out in order to get bigger or to grow. Okay. So until until that person hits that point and like that light bulb goes off somehow, if it's inside their own intelligence, then yeah, they're gonna want to do it. Okay, so that's gonna be a really good thing to look back upon because um, when we go into our own, when we first started reselling, that's a really good point because you have to almost get frustrated, right? If I hear you correctly, you have to get to a point of frustration a little bit where you start realizing, like, man, my process isn't working, this isn't working, I'm, I'm not finding what I'm supposed to be shipping out or this and that. So um, let's go into uh, the comment real quick, the comment feeds, and some people have been saying, Cody Orgel said, anybody can do it once they learn the process. So that's Cody from Australia. Mike Decker thinks anybody and everybody should. Does that make sense, Riso Rabbit? Anybody yeah. can do it, and everybody should do it. That's pretty, I, I think, like that statement. That's that's good. That's concise as all can be, right? Yeah, and I think when you're first starting out, it might not be as necessary because you have more time than money. But as you <clears throat> progress and start to hit a plateau and hit a ceiling, you start to have you get to a point where you have less time and more money, and it becomes much more important to streamline so you can grow. Yeah, I really like that, Mike Decker. Uh, anyone and everyone should. That's so like it's four words, but it like really hits home quickly. It just means everybody should be doing it, and anybody can do it. So, um, and then here's one from Al L because I made a Periscope yesterday, <laughs> about, uh, preview of my streamlining kind of thing with eBay, and it said, "Bonafide Hustler, your package setup in the garage is off the charts." So if you always see my Periscope. I did take back the curtains in my garage, um, and I showed like how I streamline and it's no joke so like I have all my stuff ready to go that's why I'm never stressed out about looking for anything I'm never stressed out about can I go sourcing today or should I be packing things up like I don't stress out about that kind of stuff I go source and I source and I source and I just have fun with my life that's the way I want to live it but it's because of successful processes okay so um, here we go uh, let's see who else is here's Mr. Sadie 123 like reselling you should always be streamlining oh I like that even the best systems can be better Raken what do you think about that one Oh, absolutely. And you see you see a lot of the big companies out there doing it as well, especially with the internet and technology. There's always more and more opportunities that you're presented with, especially with softwares and stuff coming out all the time to be able to uh, streamline your business and make it more efficient. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you know how substantial your streamlining is. Like you could always make it more streamlined, whether, like I said, with software or with employees. I mean, the list goes on and on, so I agree hundred percent. Okay, cool. I, I completely completely agree with it as well. Aaron Kipper says, I think the best way, best I think to start streamlining is to identify any or all of your bottlenecks in your business. Mm. That's the best way to start. Let's to identify first. Like, don't just go like, okay, you know, I'm just going to do that. You know, you have to identify where your frustrations are and then approve upon that. Um, you know, this is going to be a perfect segue into our next uh, part of the actual hangout. Uh, well, or hold on. Walter Ruth says, I think anyone can do it after they learn their business inside out. Okay, so there's no use streamlining something you don't understand, if, if that's what I hear him saying, right? If you don't understand yes. what's going on, why try to streamline anything? Exactly. Right? You have to be frustrated. I think you have to be frustrated a little bit to streamline or to be inclined to streamline, right? Yeah. Let's go into you, Rake and Profit, when you first started out hustling and reselling, right? You came out of Cracker Barrel, you started watching some videos, and let's, <clears throat> let's go past the... The, the section of your life where you're flipping bikes on Craigslist because I don't want to, you know, it's it, it's easy to, it's it's very easy with bikes. You just buy I know where you're going. Yeah. You go. Let's go into the clothing part of who you were back in the day. Okay. Yeah. And um, talk to us about like how was it when you first? I mean, you didn't obviously become rake and profit straight out of the gates with clothing. Talk to us right, about right. that. Yeah. Um, you're right about what you said before. Like you've got to become very frustrated before you start to streamline and that's how I was. I was so frustrated. I was living at my parents house at the time. I had 300 items for sale of clothing in my closet. I was listing on I was listing on the floor and on my bed at times and I, when something sold I could never find it. When I had to write up my eBay listings I never like I always forgot to like include like the size or like I forgot to include like the measurements like I didn't even know how to measure like I had so many problems and the way that I streamlined it, just like you said, was like I figured out my weak points. So like over time, you start to like create these systems 
that allow you to become more efficient. Like for example, um, before I just had a closet full of clothes. When I found when something sold, I had to go through each and every every one. So I asked myself, like, all right, how can I make this more efficient? And all I did is I literally took out a pen and a pad and I wrote down all these different ways that I could make it more efficient. And then I chose the best one. I created a system for that. Um, also, like for example, like I always forgot things. Like I said, I forgot the size, I forgot the measurement. So what did I do? I created a script that I would print off each and every time I went to list items. So now instead of wasting all this time trying to figure out like, you know, should I include this, should I include that? I just fill in the blanks. So um, it takes time. I, I think that's kind of like what you were saying. Like I didn't all of a sudden turn in a rake and profit, which is honestly I'm just a normal guy. Everyone out there, like you're gonna find your way. But I mean, you've got to you got to be faced with these problems. And once you do, that's the key right there. You've got to realize you've got a problem, and then you've got to search for a solution. And in today's day of age, you could f you. It's so easy to find a solution nowadays with Facebook groups. I mean, if you're stuck with a problem in your business right now, and you're making less than like a hundred thousand dollars per month, you have no excuse because there's people out there that can help you. Seriously, what, what does it take, Chris, in the green room for somebody to find a uh, answer to one of their questions? What do they do? They, they, they burn like three or four calories and they take the mouse and they just ask the question. And within 10, 15 minutes, you've got like 20 answers. So it's so easy nowadays, but you've got to have that drive. I think it all comes back to that drive. So that's my long-winded answer. It takes time. You've got to find the problems and then you've got to search for the answer. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, want, I do want to add, uh, you know, when you were king of clothing, rake and profit, um, you even got so streamlined to where your business grew and you had to get a, was it a, like a locker space or something? You had to get something and yep. there was always little I, tags on top of your clothing, right? Yeah, yep. So I, uh, I moved from, it's funny, I moved from my bedroom to a storage locker that was about 150 square feet and then I got to the point where it wasn't efficient enough and, and for me to grow I needed to hire employees so what did I do I moved from the storage locker into a it was like a 600 square foot office space where I had a few people working for me taking pictures doing the measurements and pretty much what I was doing is I was streamlining the business I was putting systems in place which would allow me to leverage my time and focus on other facets of the business and it even allowed me to focus on other businesses that I built up pretty uh, substantially um, while doing the same, you know, while doing the eBay business, so you're 100 percent right, man. Yeah, um, Patrick Henry has a really good comment, I guess, relating to that whole thing. To me, streamlining is sacrificing time today to make time tomorrow and the next day and the next mm. day. It's pretty good. Uh, Trisha Y says, "I agree. I have to be frustrated first. Once in a while, I'll misplace an item that I sold. So, you know, it happens to people, right? Even to the most streamlined people, sometimes you'll misplace an item. But if you're not streamlining at all, if you don't have your processes down, processes down, then you know, if you're selling, you know, five, ten, twenty, thirty different things a day on eBay or whatever, or um, you can't say FBA because you have to mail it in there, obviously. But you know, with eBay, for example, I mean, God, you really want to be looking around multiple times a day for something, or do you just want to know exactly what genre of the shelf it's going to be on and just pick it up? Anyway, so everyone does it a little bit differently. You don't have to box up all your stuff like I do. I just love to do that. That makes me happy, right? But someone like Jason T. Smith, who has thousands of stuff on eBay, he has all his stuff neatly stacked on a shelf, sometimes by color, by size, by Hawaiian shirt, by tiki shirt, by this. You know, I, you can see it in the background of all of his videos. He knows where everything is. But he did openly admit on our green room hangout that you know he had to be frustrated first before you started organizing it the way that he did. So anyway, um, let's talk about uh, unless you're Amazon. I know Francisco Castillo says unless you're an Amazon FBA, but we're gonna we're gonna figure out how someone here, um, an FBA, a uh, total total freaking rabbit of FBA, is going to show you how he streamlines streamlines his business. So, and he he does it on the road too. So there are really no excuses at this point. This guy's on the road streamlining, and he's got some stuff to talk to you guys about. So we're gonna first go into um, College Picker. When you first started reselling, kind of like raking. You know, where did your uh, issues fall, or were you just kind of winging it at first with your first college picker videos with the Fuji bike and the canoe? I remember seeing your videos back in the day, and some of your first videos had random stuff, and it was just tossed all over your room. Like, talk to us about that part I've, of your life. I've misplaced items so many times, I'm sure. Uh, between storing them, my father's house, my mother's house, my college dorm, or whatever apartment I was staying at, if something was more than a month or two old, maybe I wouldn't even remember where it was at. So yeah, absolutely. Misplacing stuff. I did the, the box filing technique that you're currently doing 
where you box everything up, you kind of write what's on it or some sort of number correlation. That worked for me, except for I s running out of space or boxes because every place that I've been at has just been kind of like a um, temporary space, so yeah. Right, but, but it's all fair to say that you've also put a fair amount of stuff into your FBA inventory. So you have a couple thousand in an FBA, right? A couple thousand items or something like that in your FBA or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm approaching a thousand. a thousand items. I don't think okay. I have more than a thousand. I think I talked to you maybe closer to fourth quarter last year and you had a, a lot more than that, but anyway. Okay, so, you know, when you do FBA, there's ways to streamline that as well. When people talk to me about my freaking box method, which I'll talk about in about one second. I got two questions about the box method right here. So the box um, method. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Um, okay, so let's go first to resale rabbit because we'll, we'll go to me after that. So when you first got started in when you first got started reselling, talk to us about that. You know, were you disorganized? Were you frustrated? And how did it kind of lead you to where you are now? Uh, I was very disorganized and very frustrated. Uh, and to make matters worse, when I first started out, I had a full-time job working 40 hours a week. I owned a store, which also took up a lot of my time, and it was just killing me. So very quickly, I learned that I need to find a way to streamline so I'm not working these 100-hour weeks trying to make things happen. Okay. So you were so the frustration got to you, and you were working. So you were double frustrated. You were frustrated with the fact that it wasn't streamlined, and you were frustrated with the fact that you got to work. So I guess only upon streamlining did you start feeling like a little bit less agitated and you've had a little bit more control, a little bit more time to source maybe? Absolutely, absolutely. Especially when, I mean, when you're working 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday uh, on top of reselling, yeah, CP knows, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's rough. It's very rough. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when I first got resell started reselling, we'll talk about me real quick. Um, it was just with bikes and everything like that, and uh, I had to get. Fr I even wrote about this in the my book. Um, but uh, you know, it had to. I had to get frustrated with, you know, making sure that I put my listings up on time, all that kind of stuff. I would literally have like twenty to thirty bikes on the side of my house. So you can imagine that getting to the side of my house wasn't really the issue. It was getting through all those bikes and finding the right one. Mm. And, all in, you know, all in time, they were always baking in the sun too. So like the 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 seats were cracking, the stun, the paint was fading, the grips were getting gooey, mm. and I had to make sure that. And I was really good at bikes. I was straight up finding them left and right. But the only reason I had to start streamlining was because these things were degrading right in front of my very eyes. So I had to start really working on my business and going, all right, you know, I know I'm working 40 hours a week, and I was even doing an MBA at that time. So I really had no time, but I did enjoy the money I was making from the bikes. It was a lot of fun. So um, that's what led me to do some of the streamlining I did back then. I was highly frustrated, trust me, not only for my job or my MBA, just these little bikes on the side of my house, which was super frustrating. So You had 30 bikes on the side of your house? Dude, that was like, I'm telling you, man. Like, <laughs> the, the bike, you yeah. let the bike graveyard get to 30 bikes? Dude, the funny part is I never <laughs> thought about taking pictures of it or documenting any of it, any of it because I never thought that I would have a YouTube channel regarding it. So I never did any of that stuff. I was just like, all right, I'll put listings on Craigslist left and right, and that's what I did. Um, and I was just never thinking, like, this could be a teaching opportunity for somebody later that wants to learn it, and my brother learned it through me, um, but that was pretty much it. So I learned it fr from you, <laughs> the bikes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Um, but, yeah, with the advent of other really amazing things that give just as much profit as bikes, I've slowed down the bike thing, and I've picked up on much other more amazing things. Anyway... Okay, so um, Young we'll and House. streamlining the box method here in a second, but uh, we got a new. We have an admin that just came in. Uh, Young, we are giving out a oh, prize today. Yeah. It's gonna oh. be uh, it's gonna be your your um, one month to live with Young in the month of December. That's what we're <laughs> Come on over. Come on over. Aren't you leaving from your apartment soon? Oh, duplex. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to a place with more space? Yes or no? <laughs> No. What are you going to do about your FBA business and all the stuff that you have in your source? I'm shutting it down. Okay. <laughs> well, this not, might not be the show. Um, How so do you, are you going to take inventory with you or are you sending it off before you move? You're moving really quickly. I mean, soon, right? Um, within the next month or so, yeah. Okay. So is your plan to take all the stuff that's FBA related in your house and like just send it in all at once or like do you really have not much, not much to send in or what? Um. No, some stuff are seasonal, so I'll, I'll hold on to those. Um, 
But um, yeah, no, most of the stuff is just being processed and being sent in, right? So. Okay, cool. Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, the topic is streamlining, if you didn't know. I'm just kidding. Okay, so you already know about that. Um, we have people, Spooky7876 says, Yong, TY Hipstar, Yong, Comfort Zone Studio, Yong. Hey, everyone. Everyone's saying, hey. Bolo Thrifting, Bonafide, Bonafide is still the man. He dunks that basketball once every hour. See it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one from the video. Okay. Um, Okay, so there's a there's a bunch of funny comments in here. What, here, Patrick, Patrick Henry to my bike, I guess thirty bikes on the side of my house thing. Bonafide was that guy back in the day, the guy with his junkyard in his yard. It was only on the side of my house. It was not in the front of my house or the back or any of that stuff. But my girlfriend did get mad at me plenty of times because there were too many bikes like all over the place. You okay. have to cut the grass. This is a full, from that. You want you want something hilarious, and you can remark on this. So there's 64 <laughs> viewers in the room, so I expect everyone to like comment on this one one statement. There were times where I had so many bicycles and people were interested in them, right? And I was like, man, I just love sourcing bicycles. So I would put the bicycle already, it was all greased up, ready to go. I would put it on my front door, okay, at my front door, and I would tell the person I got dinner to go to or lunch to go to or whatever to go to, and I would say, just if you go, go check out the bicycle. If you like it, then put the money under the doorstep. No, you did not. I, I'm not even kidding. You can ask E-Money, you can ask my, my girlfriend, you can ask everybody this. I used, I did that... I never got burned one time either. That's the craziest part about it. I never wow. got burned once. And I would come home, look under my mat, and there was just like 20s and 100s. I was just like, yeah, dude. <laughs> so anyway. Dude, you're so it. paranoid about your cul-de-sac, though. No, no, I'm not paranoid about my cul-de-sac. I, I trust. See, I go by this thing. Like, you got to trust people <laughs> unless they prove to you not to be trusted. But if I'm not meeting somebody, I'm like, okay, who is really going to come to my house and scam me out of a bicycle. And I was like, it's almost like an experiment, and it never happened. So I was like, you know what? Nobody will. So, I mean... You know what? I was, some... I was just talking to one of my buddies today who sells tons of bike. He's like he's like one of the, the biggest bike resellers in Connecticut, and uh, I wholesale a lot of bikes to him that if, if I get too many, I just want to get rid of 10 or 15, I'll, I'll go to him. And he was telling me some stories today on a phone where... He kind of lives in like a bad part of town in the city, and he says like it's happened to him like five or six times where like somebody will drive up in a car to his house, right, and they'll park the car there, so there'll be two people in the car. One person will get out and they'll test drive the car, test drive the bike, and then right when he test drives the bike, the the car takes off, and he and the other guy takes off in the bike, and then they're gone. He says it's happened to him about five or six times. So if you're living in the city, do not listen to what the bona fide said. I'm telling you right now. Because I, I you know it's funny. I'm, I'm surprised you even do that. Like Eric said, man, you get really paranoid, Chris. I'm. <laughs> you know the the funny part is there have been many times where I met offsite, right? And they're like, okay, I'm gonna take the bike for a spin, and then they take it and they disappear around the corner somewhere. And I'm like, I'm sitting there looking at my watch, like, at what point do I start flooring my car around this like general vicinity looking for this bike? But it never <laughs> happened. So I don't know if it was just like. The people were like, oh, I'm going to do that to that person that shows up. You're and they, a good then they part see of me. Though, man. Well, maybe You're they see me and they're like, all right, I don't want that guy coming after me. Maybe maybe that's what's going on through their head. Maybe they're like, all right, maybe not this time. I'll go mess up with the other I'll mess with the other guy, but not this guy, maybe not. Like, he looks pretty weird. That's a good way to streamline your bike business. If you're busy, like, put some money Dude. under the doormat. It's a, no, it's a legitimate tip. That's a really good idea. It worked. I'm telling you here in Austin, Texas. Now, I don't know if I would do it present day anymore, but back in the day when I was one of the leading bike hustlers in this town, it definitely worked. Um, now, I don't know because there's more, like, you know, FedEx, UPS box thefts at the door now. There's all kinds of things going on that are have come around in the past five years, you know, and so people now are looking at people's doorsteps like all the time during all parts of the year, looking for packages, looking for all kinds of things, right? And they want to steal it. So I don't know if I would do it now. But you I could even ch you could even chain it up and be like, yo, the code is one two two six, and then take it for a test drive and leave the chain like on the side of the house and take. That's interesting. It's not bad. Yeah. So anyway, um. So there are a lot of comments coming in. They're pretty funny. You should read them if you uh, get a chance. Okay. So, uh, Young, we were talking about streamlining, but before we get into streamlining, we were talking about, like, you know, what does it take for someone to be, to start wanting to streamline? And I was like, well, let's take a look back at our, you know, hustling lives, like, when we first started hustling. And what did it take for you, Young, to become streamlined with eBay, for example? Because I know FBA didn't exist back in the day when you were messing with it. So oh. what, what did it take? Like, what kind of frustrations did you encounter? And, like, what, at what point do you go, okay, now I need to organize? Like, talk to us about that. Um, not finding, not being able to uh, find my uh, inventory. Like after you sell something, it's just 
you know, especially, I mean, and that's the thing about eBay, right? I mean, the inventory is in your house. You need some kind of a system um, where where you know where everything is. Uh, one of the problems that I had was initially was I, I, I just threw everything in the closet. I didn't, you know, I didn't tag them or anything. I didn't really have a system, and I would sell stuff, and it just, you know, after a couple of days, I just sent them a message that said, hey, I, I no longer have their item. <laughs> but, um, you know, that problem has been resolved, and um, I haven't had that situation happen since. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go into the, this part of the show where we talk about how we streamline our business current day. And uh, now this is a, the part of the show where now the frustrations are gone, or maybe they're still kind of there, but for the most part, I would say that we all have, the ones here on the admin panel have a fair like grasp upon their own business and they run it the way that they want to. And I would honest, I can honestly say when I talk to these people behind the scenes and everything, we're always, we're never, we're never I don't want to say this word, I'll say it, we're never bitching about our business, we're never bitching about this, we're never like, oh my god, I can't believe this customer that, we never talk about that behind the scenes. And when they come into town, we never talk about that either. We're always talking about just sourcing, the fun, you know, the experiences that come with hustling, um, you know, the kind of life you can live while hustling, like, it's just fun like that. So that's what happens when we get together. Um, and same thing with uh, Resale Rabbit, when I hustled with them two weeks ago, you know, someone that's on top of their game discusses all the really good things about their game, but they there's like no talk about all the negative things because they hardly encounter the negative things because they're pretty much on point with their business. So I just want to disclose that. Um, I wish we had some like horror stories, but we really it's we really don't. Dude, I had like ten returns last week. Freaking sucks. Did you really? Something like that. I just mm. I was at work and it was just like issued really? refund, issued refund, issued refund. I was like, Come you're on. dealing with electronics, right? A lot of electronics and stuff. Wow. Well, that's the first I heard of this one. I I, did, I could have sworn I complained about it last week. I have Maybe had two not. returns in the past know. month, and then they got reimbursed for some reason, so I got paid. I, I got to look at it. Look um, at it. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've redone my FBA business now, too, since I did it. When I went front-heavy with electronics, and then I backed off that strategy quite significantly. Uh, I still do electronics a lot, but I just, I'm just i not front-heavy anymore um, because of the return thing and because <clears throat> I had to figure out what was going wrong. Okay, so... You know, this this is a perfect. Uh, let's ask this among the panel. You know, is streamlining something young? Is streamlining something that is finite? Like you get to it and you're done. You're you're streamlined. Like past tense, you're done. Like is that nope. something that? Nope. Because everything's always evolving. Um, Amazon's always evolving. eBay's always evolving. So it, it's no. It's uh, you know, you're gonna have to learn something new sooner or later. I mean, because okay. things are constantly changing. What about other people that are like, what about big businesses like freaking Microsoft, Philip Morris, you know, like FedEx? Like, what about big place, you know, big companies like this? Are they always trying to streamline, or is it something that you, you know, you, you see a goal and you get there and there's nothing, there's nothing else to streamline? What do you think? No, well, I mean, they're, they're always, um, I mean, for, I mean, like, for, for example, me, like, you know, you guys don't have a day job and whatnot. I mean, they're always improving something, or at least they think they're improving something, right? I mean, they're always releasing new softwares. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a constant cycle. I mean, they're always upgrading, any, you know, everything. Okay. All, company, all companies will do it. It's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It, it'll never end. Uh, CP, what do you think about that? Do you think it's something that if you master, like, let's say, like your Etsy or something, is that something you're always going to be working on streamlining? Or do you, do you get to a point you're like, this is going to be a good point. I can sit it here for, like, many years. Or, like, what do you think? Uh, I don't think in many years, but I might be able to set it to a point where I can forget it maybe for, like, three or four months and... Mm. It will. It might, the thing is, it won't grow. It will just. It'll. It might have like an upward trend, but it will peak. If you want to break that peak or that plateau, mm. then you have to. Did you just say set it and forget it? <laughs> <laughs> I saw one of those at the Goodwill the other day. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? Reagan, what do you think? It's it's ongoing all the time. Like even when you think you're at your best, there's always something to improve. If you're not growing, you're dying, in my opinion. And if you're not putting focus on something and you're not like striving to actually improve upon it, it's gonna like like CP said. I agree 100% with what he said. It'll grow to a certain point, but it will peak out and it will start to go stagnant and and probably start to go downward as well. So, you know, I don't just like health or any other area of your life. If you're not focusing on it, like if you're not growing, you're you're dying in a sense. Okay. 
Uh, Resale Rabbit, this is a perfect time for to us to segue into you and FBA um, because um, there's something that you're going to talk about that I really want to know about and Reagan probably wants to really know about too and probably with CP as well. But um, now you're fully, I mean, you're not fully streamlined, but you're always an ongoing kind of thing. But you're to a point now and you've, you've cracked into something recently, which is really cool. So let's talk about your business. How many items do you think you have? Like two, three, how many, 2K, 3K? What do you think? Uh, probably about 2,000 or so. Um, I move enough product where most of it sells once it checks in, so I, I can't really build it up much. Okay. I think you have that issue like Yong. Yong, Yong was always trying to like put, punch past this one like quantity thing. It was so hard for him. He would always be talking about it, how he's like, every time I try to punch through this damn number, it's like I can't get past it because this as much stuff sells and I have to find just as much to source. And Anyway, so... It was 2K. It was 2K. I can never reach that mark. <laughs> get past the equilibrium. Well, Dugan has something that well, might make it even harder for him to pass certain numbers, but talk to us about this... Uh, the streamlining that you're involved with with FBA? Um, well, I recently signed up for a repricer that reprices all of my inventory, and it's just moving so much product for me. Uh, it, it paid for itself within a day. Okay, now people probably like, what the hell did you just talk about? So what is a repricer for those people that are complete beginners that are watching and are like, okay, what is this thing? A repricer is a software that will go into your Amazon account and be competitive with your pricing. You can set up you know, whatever rules you want it to follow and if someone undercuts you, you can have your repricer undercut them or you could have it set up where it'll only drop a certain amount. Or, there are a lot of rules that you can set up but I guess the simplest way to describe it is that it's a software that will go in and adjust your pricing. Okay, so now that people probably go, okay, it's software, it goes in, does a job, it's probably expensive. How much does this thing cost a month to you? I pay $25 a month, but the entry level plan is $10 a month. It's based on how many products you have in inventory. Okay. Now, Steve, you're, you're slowly building up your inventory for FBA. Is a repricer kind of something you're going to yes. be thinking about soon? or what? Yes, I've already been thinking about it, and I've already been watching some videos and tutorials and stuff. Um, I haven't really determined which one I'm going to go with and whatnot. Um, I'm going to be talking to the rabbit a little more. A little bit more about that, but it's something I've definitely been thinking about because I feel like I'm at the point now where it's like if I want to get to the next level, I've got to I've got to get a repricer. So, okay, now as a repricer, a good thing to have, let's say, when you have some really cool one-off electronics, or is it something to have that broadly? Can you set it to certain? Okay, I guess my question is, a repricer sounds important for some people that might like hustle lays, Oreos. Um, all kinds of things that are regularly available and they're just constantly flipping it, right? But what happens when you have that really rare carousel CD changer or that DAT thing or that freaking you're the only FBA seller at, you know, th does it get competitive there too where you really wouldn't want it to be competitive? You still want to stay at the top of your... Yeah, do you see what I was kind of saying, Dugan, or no? Yeah, you can set exceptions for certain SKUs if you don't want it to reprice that at all. You can even set up uh, special rules just for one SKU but I have mine set up where it won't drop below 15% of what I'm currently at, and it won't drop below current market trends. So it's kind of intelligent in that way where if someone undercuts me by just a ton, I'm, you know, it's not going to reprice to that. Okay. I wonder if people out in the comment feed, too, you know, you guys that are watching, it doesn't matter what level you're at, if you are, you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced FBA, or not even in an FBA, you know, um, tell us how you're... Uh, involving the uh, streamlining with your own business. And if it's with FBA, are you using a price? I'm just really curious. So, um, CP, I know, I'm pretty sure you don't use a repricer. Yes or no? Am I right about that? Uh, do not have a repricer. You have gone Ninja Black again, just like last week around this time. Oh, uh, no way, dude. No you, way. Need to, you need to get that Rocketfish uh, camera installed. <laughs> I do not use one right now. Oh, it just came back. Anyways, I don't have one right now. Um, my prediction is that Amazon is going to incorporate their own type of repricer in their um, system within the next year or two. There's a rumor that uh, Inventory Lab will be creating one, too. Oh, okay. So if you do with Amazon, I assume if you're paying the 40 bucks a month or whatever their pro plan is, like that would just come with it? Is that what you're kind of saying, CP? Well, I'm just saying because out of nowhere, Amazon released this seller's app where you could start scanning stuff 
and getting ranks and information just it came out of nowhere. I remember one day I, I looked on the Google Play Store and it was there. And, <laughs> voila. And, yeah, voila. Like all these third party scanning software services um, have this competition of a freaking top five company creating apps and using their own inventory or their own um, databases <clears throat> to be more a lot more efficient and faster. So like I see them already like doing these repricing uh, emails, like they have these repricing things on the app where they say, "Oh, do you want to reprice this based on this?" But I I can I can see it coming, man. I see it coming. It might be a stretch, but that's my prediction. Okay. Amazon has a new tab up on top that's uh, for pricing. I think they rolled that out about a month or two ago, so it'll recommend what. Yeah, you should the recommendations, reprice. but not the parameters. I'm saying they're going to come out with full fledged parameters. You can set it. You can kind of do those kind of, you have that control that you do in the third party uh, realm. Okay, Cam, Kevin Nielsen says they already have some lightweight repricing tools on Amazon. That's what he says. Um, Cody has a good important question. Question: Is there an eBay equivalent to the FBA repricing thing, like reprice it or salary or whatever? Is there a equivalent to eBay? The percentage off, maybe. What do you got? I mean, I, I don't, I mean, the store oh, sale. Enough eBay. I, I source things that are uh, hard to find. That's how I make my eBay money. But like, I'm trying to think. Like, have I ever seen anything like that? I do use the sale thing all the time, though. But I, I don't know of any repricer for eBay. Okay, so maybe Scott that. Zilk says uh, App Eagle will reprice eBay items if they're in the eBay catalog. Okay. That's what I was gonna say. eBay doesn't have enough like data pullage per like SKU cataloging as Amazon does. <laughs> So it, it would just be like set, the whole point of a repricer is to get the customer to buy your product because it is the cheapest FBA or because you won the buy box or for whatever reason, right? So you're just trying to entice the buyer with a better price. So maybe just slashing your eBay 10 or 15% would be something similar. Now, I always thought that the goal of a repricer was to take the human element out of it like every week or every day. Uh, what's the real reason behind it? What do you think, Rab uh, Resale Rabbit? I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, before I got a repricer, I would be in there and manually repricing each item. Take me about four hours to go through my entire inventory. So Jeez. as I built up, I was doing it less and less. So I had a lot of stuff sitting that was not competitive. So it's like pressing cruise control on your car and taking your foot off the pedal, I guess, right? I mean, you're just, just looking at the scenery and not focusing on the pedal. So I, I, I think I, I see what you're saying. So um, here's a question, I guess, for some people. Um, is there a point where you, like a certain amount of uh, products where you're like, okay, now I need a new repricer? At what point do you suggest a repricer to the general public out there that has 500 items, 200 items, 1,000 items, 3,000? What do you think, Resale Rabbit? I think it just comes down to how much time you have. If you only have 50 items in stock, it does not take long to go and manually reprice them. When you get to the point where you find yourself doing it less and less, maybe you used to reprice once a day and now it's once a week. Maybe you used to do it once a week, now you're doing it once a month. And then you might want to start thinking about it. Okay. okay. Uh, Treasure Gnome says, are you guys not worried that it will lower the market price over time when more sellers start using it, though? A lot of resellers are using it. I... Um, like I said, I have cer certain rules so it won't drop below a certain percentage of what I already have. So if, for it to drop more than 15%, it would have to go like a penny at a time. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about... So now we have a pretty accurate uh, view of how the Resale Rabbit has involved streamlining into his own business. Um, if you do want to know how he kind of conducts his business, you can check out the previous Green Room Season 1 videos, and we did interview him as Flaunta Claus, but he's basically Resale Rabbit. But he'll tell you his like whole setup and like how he goes around the nation. He's got everything in his van and all that kind of stuff. If you want to learn how to streamline on a trip, which Raken is probably about to do a 60-day trip coming next year, I want to say. Nope. So 90 days starting December 1st. Say again? December 1st, I'm out. I'll be on the road for 90 days. 90 days. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yep. Okay, that, so I think streamlining is in your imminent future for sure when it comes to doing your business off the on the road and everything. The cool. rabbit and I will be meeting up uh, day forty five of my trip. Okay, cool. And I know you'll be coming through Texas, so I want to. What vehicle are you taking? Both. I'm taking. 
yeah, we're both we're both picking our own vehicles for reasons. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm taking the Hyundai uh, Sonata. What are you rocking with, Rabbit? I'm going to be getting rid of the Rabbit van before that. I am about really? to hit 210,000 miles. So what do you what do you plan on again? I'm getting. I'm thinking about getting a cargo van or a box truck because of these after <laughs> Christmas sales. I'm not kidding. With these after Christmas sales, I'm going to be buying. You, you guys should have seen the Rabbit and I. Remember when we were at that one hotel, John, and we we you had like a shipment of like. Ten boxes. I have like three or four or five boxes, and I was struggling to get my boxes into my little car, and he couldn't get them in. And like, you just managed to get that last box in there, and like, it was crazy, man. Like, space is so important on the road. It, it really is. I had to is. leave stuff in the hotel room. I had to leave a bicycle behind the hotel. I know someone found it. <laughs> you just left the bicycle there. <laughs> I found it on the side of the road for free. It was probably like a hundred dollar bike, but I had no other choice. You oh should have God. left it by a, cheer, a tree and left a note saying to PayPal you $100 if they take the bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Chris would have done. That's funny. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you want to learn about streamlining on the road, then pay attention to uh, Rake and Profit and Resale Rabbit's um, periscopes. Well, Resale Rabbit's periscopes currently, and then Rakin's periscopes when he's on the trip. So he shows you exactly how he kind of does it. Um, uh, let's ask. Let's answer this one question from Thrifty, Thrifty Treasures. Rabbit, Resale Rabbit, are there parameters to set only for the repricer to mess with FBA pricing and not compete with Merchant Fulfilled? Yes, only reprice based on FBA. Merchant Fulfilled is completely irrelevant to me. Okay. Well, does the repricer know that? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. So is it only messing with prime kind of things, like things like with prime prices or no? What's the deal? I mean, you can have it repriced against Merchant Fulfilled. The only reason you'd want to do that is if you are Merchant Fulfilling. Okay. But if you want it to be specific to just prime, you can have it set up that way. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, what do we? So let's talk about the top three repricers out there. Then we'll go into like my box strategy and some other things. So what's the top three repricers that we know? Uh, Raken, what what are you researching right now? We know that. Uh, Rabbit uses the inventory lab. Uh, Young, do you even use a, a, a repricer yourself or no? No, not not at the moment. Um, okay. I will in the future. But so you're just listening to all this information. That's cool. One thing uh, I will say, though, real quick, Chris, is um, before, before we move on, is like I manually do it, but the thing, but what I'm more worried about is stuff that I have multiple items of, right? Because those are the stuff that I want to get rid of ASAP. Those are the ones that I'll focus um, on when I reprice, you know, the products manually. Um, everything that's that's you know, quality of one, I don't. You know, I might go in there about, you know, once every other month, but I'm more okay. worried about the multiple quantities. So you go like you, you get your quantity column high, right? You look at your quantity column like, a couple times, and it gets to okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that's a way to do it. E an easy way to where maybe you get that long-term storage fee thing, like you're not getting hurt on the road because you have so much stuff there. Yeah. Makes some sense. Okay. Um, Nestor Diaz, real quick, let's fly through the panel here. What's your Periscope? CP, don't worry about it. I don't think you're on Periscope yet. Uh, Rake, what's your Periscope? Rake and Profit. Uh, Rake and Profit. Uh, Rabbit, what is yours? Resale Rabbit. Okay. Yong? Uh, Rake and Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Young J. Chong. I'll, I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the chat. Young J. Chong. Okay. And mine is at YouTube Hustler. Y O U T U B E Hustler. Um, Reagan, um, because I know you have a Hyundai and everything. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, for doing what you're doing, I really think you should get something a little bit larger. I mean, I was just going to call you behind the scenes one day, and let's toss this out to the comment feed. But I really think if you're going to go across the USA for freaking 90 days, I think you've got to get like a Honda Odyssey or a Sienna. Or... I'll tell you, I made it work for 95% of the time. The only times it didn't work is when I got lazy and I didn't ship when I needed to ship. Um, I would say, though, that I would disagree with that statement that I just made for Q4. I, I think you're 100% right. But for most of the year, if you're shipping with Amazon FBA, I mean – I mean, if you have bikes, you're supposed to get a bike rack. I know I dropped the ball there, but I mean, I don't. I feel like I could get away with it without having to invest in another car and get you know another insurance and have another you know car tax and stuff like that. I, I know that I can make up with it with the profits, but it, at this point, I don't. I don't see the benefits. Plus, I get good okay. gas mileage. I wasn't I'm saying trying... get a whole another vehicle. I was saying just trade yours in and get like a rabbit van or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I've thought about that and. You know, my my car is fairly new. It only has about fifty thousand miles on it, but 
it, it, it definitely has been a thought, and I, I think like if I was to do it again, I probably would have gotten something a little bit bigger, maybe like kind of like one of those SUV like efficient ones, the ones that aren't just like massively huge and like horrible gas mileage. Okay. I'm trying to convince him to get a van for this trip for two reasons. <laughs> One, he's going to be putting like three years worth of driving on his car. You don't want to do that on a nice new car. I know, two, I know. You're right. All the after Christmas sales, I plan on filling up the van to the rafters every single day. <laughs> You're going to be leaving inventory behind. <laughs> oh, I got to say, I hustled with you two weeks ago, and it's like we were so on point for those four or five hours. That's all we cared about was like, Let's go to the next garage sale. Let's just find more crap. Let's just go. Like the, it was just on, and he like hustles the craziest stuff too, which is really cool. And uh, I think what you posted yesterday in the green room, the thing that looks like a white X or a white V or a Y, upside down Y. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That thing was an amazing flip. Just want to tell you. I mean, I saw it and I was like, really? And you were asking the guy all these key questions, like, are you sure it's unguarded? Are you sure your account's not tied to this thing? And uh, they were like, yeah, 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 and all this crap. And then uh, you bought it, and I was like, why would? And then you told me everything behind it. And I was like, why would anyone need that? And then I was like, oh. And then you, when you showed what you sold it for, I was like, holy crap, man, no way. So anyway, uh, we, you know, you learn things on ride alongs. So that's the best part about having two expert hustlers on a ride along. It's like everyone's learning. So okay. So and people are saying stuff to you, uh, Rake and Profit here. Get, get a good MPG minivan. So cool um, for bike for bikes. Steve, get some roof racks with a bike carrier. Okay. Sonatas are too small. Trade it in. Uh, Trippy <laughs> Treasure says like a 15 passenger empty van. Get that. Uh, Patrick Henry says yes. You need something bigger than a Hyundai. I'm gonna get a school bus. Um, I almost I bought just... a school bus. <laughs> Imagine that for the green room meetup, having a school bus, right? And we pick all the people up, man. I'm not kidding. Like two months ago, I found one for like five grand, and I was so close to buying it. Jeez. You know, you know, oh, one God. thing I keep hoping uh, uh, that they'll do is uh, I really want Volkswagen to come out and re-release the uh, the Volkswagen bus. They've tr- they've thought about it many times. Oh, let me look that up. I want to see what that. And and, th- and then there's rumors saying that if they do, it's gonna be uh, uh, you know electric car, but that makes no sense because Volkswagen bus are meant to go long distance and on an electric car, you can only go so far, so it makes oh. no sense. Um, so I, I, heard there were, I heard there were rumors that it was going to pollute the environment too much, so they were like, nah, we shouldn't make this thing. I'm just kidding. That was a stab. That was a cheap <laughs> stab. Um, I know. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, regardless of what you pick, Reagan, everyone's saying, you know, do what you need to do. Um, I can honestly tell you for fourth quarter, um, there were many times I went out with the Prius, and I filled the Prius, well, which isn't hard to do, but I filled the Prius all the way to the top with mm. random things I found at big box stores very quickly, very easily on a daily basis. So it's not hard to get a lot of product in a small car, I'm just going to tell you. So, um, and big box stores are all over your trip, so it's not like every town you go to is going to have your Walmart, your Targets, your this and that. You're going to be finding these places in every town that you go to. So just be on the lookout and uh, ship every single day, Rick. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, ship. That's what I'm saying. The times day. that I screwed up the most is when I decided to like not ship that day because you you never know like when you're going to find that deal. Like my last day of my thrift store trip. I came across a thousand CDs and I didn't have the room for it, and I, I paid, I paid for it. <laughs> I definitely paid for it. So I bet you would have had the room in a minivan <laughs> or a school bus. Hey, rabbit. Okay, so we're gonna get into um, CP real quick. How? Okay, so CP is in a very precarious, precarious situation. The good thing is he's mailed a lot of his stuff off already to FBA. It's just sitting there making money for him while he's in these interesting scenarios where he's he doesn't have quite a big place to live in so he doesn't have shelves all over the place he's not he doesn't have the whole box strategy but when you were living in Florida most recently I mean you have all your business down there right all the stuff's ready to go I mean is it one of those kind of situations uh, most of it is yeah I actually have some inventory right now that I pick up for Etsy that I'm gonna bring down there and then list and organize and I I had taught my mom how to um, ship so she helps me a huge amount with uh, shipping Okay, so you involved your mom with streamlining. That's good. I need to call my mom up and tell her to help me streamline that as well. <laughs> I think that would help me so much. Um, no, honestly, uh, my mom actually might be moving down here one day in the future, and I'm going to totally, totally teach her how to hustle. She's going to love it. Kind of like Rickon's mom. Um, and, you know, that's a fun thing. I get, Dude, Rickon's mom just looks like she's alive when she's hustling. She looks like she's having fun. <laughs> yeah. So, 
I'm going to do that with my mom for sure. So, and That's I, awesome. I think everyone at the core level likes to shop. So it's just like shopping and getting paid for it, really, if you think about it. Um, she, my mom actually likes to ship. She says it's like a puzzle. She has to find the right box and the right stuff. And especially when she helps me with FBA, like it's like Tetris, and she loves it. She, she genuinely likes it. Well, that's good. Well, then at least she's having fun. That's all that matters. If you're having fun, hey, it's great. Um, uh, Raykin, let's talk about your present day FBA. We're going to have to close the show out here pretty soon. Let's talk about your present day and streamlining uh, FBA. I guess you've been in Connecticut now for like a month, maybe a month and a half, two months. So are you w you only do FBA right now. You're not doing eBay. Um, how is your streamlining going on right now? Is it pretty good? Um, it, it definitely has a lot of work, uh, a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I did purchase Inventory Lab. I haven't... I haven't dove into it too much. I've been focused on uh, creating my pawn shop book, which is officially done, and I'm moving on to my place, and I've got a few things going on. So I haven't, but I haven't put a ton of uh, effort into Amazon since I've been back. But uh, like I said, I did get Inventory Lab, and that's one thing that I'm going to be uh, working on a lot because I saw the rabbit using it, and it'll save you a ton of time. There's a lot of uh, benefits to Inventory Lab, and the rabbit he could touch on that, but. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement, to say the least. It really is. Okay. Yeah, and then, Young, uh, the way you kind of do yours right now with your FBA, are you kind of the kind of person who grudge sales, let's say, on a Saturday, you get a bunch of stuff, and then you wait till you have a certain amount of items? How do you kind of do your, your uh, strategy now? Like, how do you do your FBA strategy, and how do you keep uh, it free for you? Yeah, no, I just, you know, I, I, I thrift throughout the week. On Saturdays, obviously, I hit up the garage sales. Sunday, I will package everything, and, you know, I said this in the past, you know, I use the 5160 Avery um, labels. Um, there's 30 labels to a sheet, so I fill those up, put it in the box. Um, fortunately, I have a UPS store that's open on Sundays um, right down the street. I drop it off, and I'm done. Okay, cool. Is that about once every – you kind of make it a, a thing to do every single week? Like, if you asked me that question, I would tell you, like, every single week I have to make an FBA shipment. I have yeah, to make sure well, to do one every week. Typically, I'll do it every week, but, you know, I have a lot of things going on in my life right now, so I've been kind of slowing down. Um, um, so, but, yeah, typically it's almost every week. Okay, cool. Um, well, that's good. Um, and then there were some questions about how I streamlined mine. Um, I don't know how many items I have on my FBA right now. I honestly don't. I think I have like somewhere between 300 and 500. Now, the way I actually streamline that is I do it every single week. I make sure it's in certain parts of my house only rather than all over the house. So it's in certain bins, usually in this room where I do most of my scanning. If it happens to be bigger boxes and stuff where uh, it doesn't really fit in this room, then I'll put it all behind the curtains over there in my gym. And then I will um, put shelves on my squat racks, my actual squat racks. I'll put shelves up there. And that's where I do all my you know, listing with the gun thing and everything. Um, so I do it all once a week. That's my goal. Once a week um, until the, those uh, those certain times in the fourth quarter when you go every single day. So I do once a week. Um, and I don't, for me, I don't worry about the labeling thing whatsoever. If I have less than 30, that's okay. If I have 60, you know, which was last week's 57 or so shipped out, then that's okay too. Um, I just make sure I do once a week and I feel pretty good about that. So mm -hmm. as long as when I'm seeing that I'm selling items on FBA, that I'm seeing that items are checking in all the time, then that's what makes me feel good. Then I know mm -hmm. like, okay, that's good. If I see that I'm selling things and something's not getting checked in, then I know that's like, that's not good. That just means that the water, the water well is going to dry up at some point. So I make sure to keep the thing fed. Um, Okay, so what's the other thing that I do? I put this on my Periscope the other day. If you watch my yesterday's Periscope, I talk about, and CP's seen this. I don't know if Raken's seen it, but every time I mess with eBay, I typically put all the eBay stuff in its own kind of like basket in the car, or if at least when I get home, I separate it into its own basket. I put that in my garage, typically in a very visible location that will annoy me. So that way I'll be forced to take pictures of it pretty quickly. So after I take pictures of it, this is the problem with what I do is like I used to make haul videos and stuff back in the day, but I got really smart about my business, and I was like, you know what, it's stresses me out to do haul videos and get in front of the camera. So what I did was I start taking a whole bunch of pictures with my cameras. I keep it on the SD card, right, for some later time that I put it on my computer, list everything. But after I take all the pictures, then I make sure, okay, what needs cleaning? I divide that up, and then I, I go, okay, you know, from all the times that I've been to dumpsters in the past, I always pick up boxes. I always pick up boxes from Costco. I'm never out of boxes. It's important not to react, but to be prepared. It's so important. So I have my boxes ready. So 
you know, there's free USPS boxes, medium, large. Um, there's so many free things, padded poly mailers that you can get from USPS.com. You can't get a whole bunch of the quantities of whatever you need, but you can make repeat orders like every single day, and you'll have a steady stream of like the shoe box, which is the coolest thing that they have. I guarantee you, the shoe box is really awesome. Um, and then they have mediums, and then they have all these other ones, and they even have stickers and all this junk, so you can use less tape. This is free. Comes from the USPS. Um, if when I, okay, when I actually package everything, right? I make sure with a Sharpie pen to put it at the edge of the box, you know, what's in there and everything like that. I make sure to put padding along the item at some, you know, wherever I need to. And if something needs to be tested, I still have the pictures in my SD card, right? But I go test it afterwards just to make sure that it's working. But I still list the original listing as if it could have been un untested. You would really never know. So um, I still take pictures of everything. That's how I like to do it. And then I box everything up. I put it on my wall which is in my garage, and then I shut the curtains, and that's it. I don't see it anymore until the day that it actually sells, and that's how I like to do my business. I think it, yeah, it just seems like the business is on cruise control. I can source whenever I want to, and I feel good about it. I don't feel like I have to be doing this weird work in the background or anything like that, um, but I do everything in shifts. You know, I kind of do my pictures in shifts. I do my shipping in shifts. I do my... Um, my boxing in shifts, and I make sure that I'm not reacting. If I'm reacting, I know things are off, so I make sure I have my bubble wrap ready to go, my tape's all good. I order my tape by like the 30 rolls at a time kind of thing from eBay. Um, my bubble wrap all comes from Costco. It's $12.84 for each one, um, and then, you know, that's what it is. And for the FBA season this year, I'm going to make sure to have like four rows of bubble tape ready to go because that'll go fast. I mean, it'll go real, real fast. The, bu the bubble bubble tape with the bubble wrap will go real fast. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see me anymore. You guys can see me, right? Yeah. But that's how I do it. I think uh, it works for me. And streamlining will work for you any way that you do it. The, the worst thing that you can do is to not do anything, right, Raken? To do nothing about your situation, have a horde of items behind you and all your hangouts, and you just look like you don't know what the hell you're doing, right? <laughs> If you're not if you're not moving forward, you're dying. Bottom line, if you're not taking action, if you're things are changing so quick in today's world. If you're if you're sitting in place, you're you're gonna lose. I could guarantee you that. Yeah, for sure. So the only reason I streamlined is because I wanted to make more time for my workout channel. So if you watch my periscopes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Do you even lift? I'll start tomorrow. Um <laughs> Yes, I lift, and I have a gym in my garage, so I built half of my garage. That's the, one of the other reasons I had to streamline so effectively is because I whittled down my garage to a you know a dedicated portion for eBay, and then this pretty big gym that's sitting in there that's ready for filming and all this kind of cool stuff. So you know I had to. I didn't have any more space to put all my eBay stuff on the floor. My bikes are along this, the side of the garage. I don't have that anymore. I have a dedicated gym with lights, and it's really cool looking, and I wanted that. That's a suggestion that I, I mean that's a Something I wanted, right? It would make me happy, so I decided to do it. So let, let, let's um, let's get to this uh, exciting part because people are talking about it. Free giveaway. Sure. Yeah, we have a giveaway. And first, before you, the giveaway Yay! starts, they have to do something for us, man. They have to do something. Exactly, for us. but who's gonna like? Okay, let's get to that point first. Before before the giveaway, what do they have to do, Chris? Um, you know, you guys out there. I know you guys want to get ripped. I know you want six-pack abs. So here's like the easiest way to get it. <laughs> You're going to have to take your finger, okay? There's a point zero zero two five of a calorie. I'm about to be burned here. You're going to have to look for that like button, which is the thumbs up one, okay? Not to be confused with the thumbs down. The thumbs up one. If you like this show and you like the topic, you're learning a little bit something, you're getting inspired, or maybe you're like, oh, cool, I'm going to start looking at repricers, or I'm going to start re streamlining my business tomorrow, or maybe you're going to join the green room. Either way, if you feel uh, like you're having a good time for this hour, Hit the like button. We'll do more shows like this, and don't be afraid to suggest more shows to us because we listen and we look at the comment feed. Um, but that's what you got to do. So I'm going to refresh the feed a couple times here, but we need to see what we're at. I think we're at 24 the last time I refreshed, but I'm pretty sure we're at 40-something. We're at 38 likes right now. We had probably consistent 70, 80 people in the room at any given time. So hit that like button. It really helps us out a lot. This is not like Periscope. You're not going to destroy your fingers on this one. This is one click. This is it. One click. Six-pack abs. Do you want it or not? Um, Raken. Yes. You're going to be in charge of the the main question for the prize. Okay, okay. You can't give it to I, Yong because we, we know what happens I've, if we give the, the question to Yong. What, man? Okay. I find we, get, we get a winner. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <clears throat> okay, so the, the question... All right, so I'm in charge of this. The first thing you're going to have to do is go to Periscope and subscribe to, uh, you know, Raken Profit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> inside joke, all right, inside joke. All right, no. This is what this is what you guys are gonna have to do. 
I'm going to ask a question right now, <coughs> excuse me, and you're going to have to answer it on the Bonafide Hustlers Facebook, okay? So what I want you to do, Bonafide, is I want you to create a post right now on your Facebook that okay. says, enter the answer here. That's what I want you to do, okay? And I'm going to ask a question. Uh, give me one second, man. Dude. All right. And this is going to be a question that if anybody watches the videos there. or even watches some of these green room videos, you're going to know the answer to it. What's the question? Go ahead. I'll type it out right now. All right. Let me know. All right. The question is, no, just just, just, just create a post that says answer here, and, and, and then I want you to just, okay. Go. Can I ask you a question? Do you know what phone I have? Is that Steve, me, or Bonafide who? Excuse me? Wait, 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 say that again? What was the question? Do you know what kind of phone that I own? Steve, you mean Rake and Profit? Yes. Okay, do you know what, what kind? I want oh. people to answer. I want people to tell, I, I want people to post what the phone is that I have, the model that I have. I, I've shown it in the green room multiple times on my thrift trip. Okay, what it, what is it? What kind of phone is this oh, right I know here? What the make and the model. So the Wait, first person I guess it, can I win? You could win it as well, but the first person to guess is going to win a hundred amazing items to resell. And this is an amazing phone to use for scanning barcodes. Really, really big screen, and uh, it does a good job. I don't know if the rabbit's going to like this because I think the rabbit's rocking out with the iPhone, right? That's a the little iPhone right is there. much better. You saw how quick the iPhone scans. My iPhone is the best. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, go answer on the Bonafide's Facebook post, and we'll see who the winner is. Okay, should I boost this post right now or not? <laughs> okay, so we have – go ahead and look at it, Raken, because I, I'm not sure I know what – okay, go ahead and say it, and I'll tell you who, who the winner is. But it's, the, it's the Samsung Note 4. Ooh, Night Required Field win. You know, you know what's funny is – you said go on Bonafide's page and answer, but I see answers in the chat. Come on, guys. Okay. Nope. I, I, yeah, I specified oh. it. you got to be listening because I tell you, oh, the guys. magic's in the details. The magic's in the details. It's like if I tell you to go buy a, a CD player, right, and you end up with this, like, junky brand, you got to buy the Sony. Okay. No, he's right. I mean, you got to pay attention to details, and clearly the people over here on my page have paid attention to details with 12 comments coming through, and it looks like the Note 4 came from Knight Required Field. He is the winner, man. Just so you know. That's Knight. So, so um, Knight, get in contact with me at Rake and Profit on Facebook. Uh, send me a PM, and I'll send you over that ebook. Hey, uh, can I delete this from my page now, Raken? Yes, you can, sir. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks, man. Very I thought pretty. you boosted it. Yeah, let me get make sure my boost went through first. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be I'd like to be billed, please. Okay, um, so we'll let um okay. And College Picker told me that he had a couple power surges in New Mexico, so he's out of the chat right now. But anyway, you know, if you did learn something from the show, if you like it, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Even if you see it after the fact and it's not live, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. We like seeing that our uh, you know likes versus dislike rate is going in the right direction. That makes us make more shows. So, thanks a lot for uh, you know being here on the show. I'm gonna close this one out because I haven't done one in a while. I always like let other people close the show out. So, thanks for watching the show. My Periscope's the best. Um, I can probably it. Pawn Shop Periscope Profits. TV. Hey, when is your guy? Okay, when is your when does your thing come out, Raken, real quick, so we can tell people out there? Like, when's it coming out? There's not an exact date, but it should probably be around the one month point. Okay. So, um, it's gonna be free for the green room members. Those are the only those those folks are gonna get it for free, absolutely free. So, uh, probably within okay. a month a month period. So. Yeah. Okay. If you guys are interested in joining the green room, check out down below the description feed once this becomes a normal video, or on any of our previous 14 green room hangouts. The green room link is there. It's 100 bucks a year. It's probably the best money you'll ever spend. But then again, if you're not convinced, look at the comment feeds, you know, or ask someone that you might see in the green room that you see through whatever, whatever that you know is in there. Like, how is it? So I'm just gonna tell you, I think it's worth the money, but only you can make the decision to be in there. Um, and with that, we thank you for investing an hour and 10 minutes of your precious Wednesday night with us. Next week, we will have another amazing show for you. And then in the coming two weeks or three weeks, we're going to have a special guest that's going to be really cool. Very significant to quarter four. You won't want to miss it. 
Um, till then, guys, thanks for watching this hangout. We really appreciate it. We appreciate the support, the, li the like, the you know, whatever you guys do for us. We appreciate every part of it. And we'll talk to you on the next hangout. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.